Hey folks, today we're going to be making a winter globe using the winter adornment stamp, which is a brand new release from IOD this quarter. And we're going to start by picking up one of these awesome little mini globes. I found mine at Marshall's, but I also found more at TJ Maxx. So check out your Rosses. They run between $12.99 and $14.99 a piece. So I'm going to go ahead and paint the entire surface with a farmhouse white, and then I'm going to go ahead and stamp it with these gorgeous images, but I'm gonna use my special trick for stamping and using things on concave surfaces. So just hold tight and let's go ahead and get the globe painted with our first base coat of white. While we wait for our globes to dry, we're gonna go ahead and start stamping a wide variety of images directly onto deli paper. This is the same paper they wrap your pickle in when you get a sandwich. We are gonna stamp on the matte side. Don't stamp on the shiny side, always the matte side. And what's great about this is you can actually stamp and cut these images up. So that poinsettia could be really big on this globe, but I can use just the poinsettia flower and then use the rest to wrap around in different sections. Go ahead and prime your stamp if you haven't already done that. This is only done the first time you open a brand new stamp and that's just by sanding block on top. I'm gonna go ahead and ink up using the IOD ink pad. I did need a refill. So just in case you need to refill before stamping, go ahead and do that. From here, you're just gonna go crazy. Start stamping as many of these designs as you want onto your deli paper. I'm also going to make sure that I have a fair amount of the smaller twigs, mistletoe pieces, so that those can be popped into the center and fill up an area nicely. It's super important that you dry these completely before cutting them out, or you will smear the ink everywhere. I'm also going to go ahead and decoupage this onto my concave surface. It's really, really helpful to snip in between corners on those little pieces to help them fold and glide nicely over your concave surface. Just go ahead and go crazy, gluing all of those pieces down to your surface. Our next step is going to be painting two coats of Daniel Smith transparent watercolor ground on your entire globe surface. You wanna make sure that this entire surface is ready for watercolor and ground is the way to do that. Once your ground is dry, you can go ahead and watercolor your globes. It is helpful to paint in small steps and stages. So once you're working in one area, go ahead and dry it. That way your watercolor doesn't roll off the sides. And I'm applying what I call scumbling, which is basically splatting with concentrated color, coming in with water on my brush and kind of blotting at those little areas of splatter to make them bleed and blend. I'm gonna go ahead and add lots of color, play around with the different layers and the values in this and splat and scumble as I go. working around getting everything painted and I'm just gonna start doing a little bit of the poinsettia. Poinsettia have um, a lot of different variations in color but I'm gonna go with a little bit softer. This is almost like a, a cranberry red. The color is called alizarin crimson and it's an absolute gorgeous color for poinsettia. So I'm just kind of touching like really concentrated puddles of color and kind of coming in with water and softening it up just a little bit. So like you'll notice I just did two little spots with alizarin crimson. I'm rinsing my brush with water coming in and just kind of kind of push that color around a little so that you play around with the concentrations of color. The fancy way of saying that is you're effectively changing the value of the color. but. For, you know, for simple purposes, you're just going to create almost like an ombre effect by coming in and adding water in and softening up. It also gives just that much more interest and like appeal to this, assuming that you like that painterly looking style, right? So I'm just kind of coming in and adding more water, trying to be careful about the concave surface as I go. The center, I'm going to come in with kind of like a golden color. The color is called Quin Deep Gold. And I'm just gonna do a couple little kisses, the little dots in there of that gold color. And because it's not uncommon to see some of that reflected in the actual leaves, I'll drop a little bit into the leaves as well, just in a few spots. 
rinsing my brush, coming in, adding a little bit of that yummy chartreuse color, which is called rich green gold. For your finishing touches, lots of splatter, lots of scumble, lots of color. Make sure you dry it completely and then you're going to seal it with a coat of workable fixative by Krylon. Happy holidays guys, see you next time.